Good morning, everyone. And let's start. Topic for today's discussion is on Azure VNet and sub designing. Also, how you can place the devices and how it will work and what all the options we have and how you can control the traffic. Those things we'll discuss in today's session. So what we discussed yesterday about IP addressing and and then we talked about what is VNet and subnet fundamentally. What I will do, I'll take an example. Class A <clears throat> within the region and across the region with the duplicate IPs. And we'll see what all the options we have, like DNS and endpoints, or how you. Right? Those kind of things we will try and understand. And if. So, what I will do, I'll take. East US, if I if I talk about a region, so I Shreeni, much you are breaking up. You are breaking up again. Yep, your voice is totally gone now. <clears throat> Just a second. This Maverick 5G was also giving problem yesterday. Okay, audible now. Yes. Right, let's see. So for most of the deployments, I will use East US as a region. So keep that in mind. And whenever we need to deploy across the regions, we'll try and use another region, maybe UK or Central India or something else. Right? Imagine I have one of the resource group one of the resource group in East US. Resource group name is East US underscore prod. And I can create a multiple VNets, right? I've created a one VNet class A prod underscore VNet one. And what could be the IP range? 10.1.0.0 slash 16. Possible. And I can create a small subnets inside based on the business requirement. The subnet can be of five IPs, or sorry, three IPs max. And you can you can have 65,000 IPs as a single subnet. So we don't really recommend, or I mean, that is not at all a best practice to have a maximum number of IPs in a single subnet. So try and identify the business case. When I say try and identify the business case, let's say if you are planning to deploy some application service. So how many application servers that you have, or if you don't know the number, uh, currently how many servers you have, and what could be the growth in next coming few years. Accordingly, you can design subnet, right? So I'll I'll do web subnet ten one one zero twenty four. Right? So it is subset of your class A prod VNet one. Let me do the same. 
like this. Right. The second one is let's say app submit 10 Okay. Just a second. Yeah. And the last one is DB subnet ten one three zero twenty-four. And so on you can create how many subnets? If you if you go on this phase, you can create up to 255 subnets within this VNet. Now the question is if I place two VMs. Might be some different VM, it's okay. If I place two servers here. Like this. So, does these two machines communicate together? You'll be able to reach them or not. And yes. if you want, if I want to exchange the data between yes. these two, it has to go via switch. <sighs> You're not audible. Someone is talking. Am I audible now? Uh, it has to go via switch between subnets. That is a VMware concept. No, it, is, it is not the. Yeah, so I mean, we have to create VNet. Have to go, have to go via VNet. Okay. So let's say I have one more thing class B, VNet 2. When I say class B, remember the range. 172, 16, 0, 0, 16. Okay, and both of them, please remember, in same region. Now I need to put, yeah, maybe. Okay, both of them are in the same region. What I will do, I'll create Two more subnets here, and I'll place some of the servers. All right, and similarly, let's say rather than giving the same prod, let's say UAT. So web subnet in UAT, correct? Uh, 172.16.1.0.24. And similarly, app subnet 172.16.1.2.0.24. So if I have these machines, again, these two machines will communicate internally or not. And by the default they will not communicate with each other because they are in different subnets. Sorry? By default they will not communicate with each other because they are in different subnet. One dot zero and two dot zero. Right. They will okay. Mitra, yeah, you were saying something. With the help of yeah. router, they will uh, okay. But the uh, resources which are in the same subnet will be communicating with each other, right? Without any uh, pairing or something. Resources in the same subnet. Yeah, resources in the same subnet would be communicating with each other, right? Without any interference. You are saying these two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And these oh. two and other subnets also, uh, web and app. They are different subnets. Yeah, even though they are in the different subnet, because in the, they are in the same VNet, they would be communicating with each other. How come they will communicate? Because they are in the same VNet. Right. 
Okay. So let's try and test it. Then yeah. we'll come to know. Yeah. That is the reason behind putting this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so imagine I have I have one more resource group. Okay, and the resource group is in a different location. Okay, the resource group is in, let's say, the UK South development resource group and i'll create same vnet and subnets here what this time what i will use class c Are you still with us, Shrinivas? Uh, I'm messaging on WebEx. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um... What's up? He's gone, okay. I guess. Okay. Choose, especially this time. Universe, universe. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Looks like throughout the day I don't see any issues with the internet. Just around seven to eight, I've seen uh, this is breaking up every day. Might be they are doing some maintenance activity. Not it. Not Can you feel? This uh, if it is too slow, yes. just let me. Know. Okay, so class C, I'll said development VNet 3 or 192, 168, 00 slash 16 is the VNet. And coming back to subnet, we'll use same terminology web subnet. Just a second. Yeah. We'll use web one ninety two one sixty eight one dot zero twenty four and app subnet one ninety two one sixty eight two dot zero twenty four. Right. <clears throat> I'll also place at least one or one device here because anyway, if, if you are able to test it here, a couple of things, it will be the same inside the VNet. Right. So for each and every for each and every device, there will be two things. One is your private IP and public IP, right? So from where you'll get a private IP? Let's say 
for this for this if i am talking about from where we will get the private ip if we are placing any device in the specific subnet so it will automatically fetch the ip address from the associated subnet okay so what what is the ip ip that we will get for this any predictions so for this first if if you, if you consider if you consider this is first server so 10.1.1.4 is ip okay this is default assignment you don't need to assign it manually or if you want to assign it manually you can always do that so 10.1.1.5 who will does that? Azure. No. What service? Your DHCP service, which is running on the back end, which is automatically assigning these IPs. If I don't want to assign these IPs, once a deployment is done, you can change back to <coughs> you can oh. change back to static and change your IP address. Sorry. Uh, there is one question over there. As you said yesterday that there is a file reserved IP in Azure. So it will start from 1.1.1.6. Is it? No. I told you five IPs and I have I've clearly mentioned those five IPs. 0, 1, 2, 3 and 255. 0, 1, 2, 3, 255. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. Right, so these are the expected IPs for these four devices. Similarly, for this device, what is the expected IP? 172.16.1.4. And for this device, 172, uh, 192.168.1.4. Right, so this is, this is a simple setup. Okay, nothing, nothing major and nothing we are going to do differently. We just do ping pong, but we just understand what are the things what we discussed, right? So internally, externally, how we is connecting, uh, communicating. Oh, now, so just I want to ask one thing. These are the two different regions. One is in the right. US and one is in the UK. That is what? Okay, two different UK regions. South. Your, your resource group naming convention itself says. Okay, okay. clear okay. so this is east us these two things are in east us and this is in a different region all right so let's go ahead okay Just, just a second, guys. Just a second. Right, sorry. Okay, so if I want to create a resource group, go to resource group. So I have a two subscriptions for now. Time being, I'll use only one subscription to do, do the deployments. And whenever we start using the Terraforms, that time we'll try and use the second one. Okay. What was the resource group, East US? prod underscore or use us yeah let's give a prod underscore resource group use us and, and the second one uk south development resource group and you have to create in uk south
if you look at under the same subscription this one and this one but located in a physically located in a two different geographies so go ahead and create a vnet east us and what is the first vnet east us underscore prod underscore vnet one your, your region is east us <coughs> and let's look at the ip range so sorry class a prod vnet one 10.1 okay go back class a Ten dot one, right? So by default, if you if you don't select anything, by default you'll get this range. That is the starting range in class here, right? So our system will automatically show you that range. So you can customize it according to your use case. And web subnet n one one zero twenty four. And still we can use zero zero twenty four. I'm not using the starting range. So usually. The starting 00, 0 subnet will be allocated for oh, sorry, allocated for your gateways. Let's say what is the significance of the gateway? Let's say if you are deploying any firewall or if you are deploying any VPN or any other security scanner devices or any jump servers, right? So those things we will deploy it in a gateway subnet. So during that time, we will use 0, 0, 0024. Okay, so that is the reason why for all the user subnets or front end production subnets, we are starting with one. There is there is use case or just a habit of every network admin, I believe. What's practice? Yeah. Two for app subnet within the same. And what was the DB subnet? DB dot three. Ten dot two dot zero dot zero slash one. You see, straight away you'll get an error because your ten dot two is not part of this address space. Okay. Or so ten dot one dot three. One dot one dot zero. Again, this is already used. You can't duplicate it, even though within the same VNet, you can't use the duplicate ranges, right? So 3.0 slash 20. Or if you want the smallest, as I said yesterday, 29 is the last. If, if you give a 29, so if someone who don't understand for each and every subnet what could be the ip range and when you when you change this subnet what could be the uh, i'll say uh, all military you can try it come to know me right Next, leave these options default to bash and soul DDoS, DDoS protection that will be about the specific. All right, so this is done. One second, I'll take. Okay, so go ahead with the second VNet. 
where you are deploying the second one within the same within the same resource group within the same resource group and a class b okay uat environment vnet vnet 2 and this is on the same region and delete this try to give 172.16 dot zero to zero slash 16. This is class B, right? So web subnet 172.16.1.0.24. Done, create. The last one, let the deployment happen. The last one under UK South Development Resource Group. So class C, development underscore VNet3. But make sure this is automatically selected because your resource group is created in UK South. That's the reason why it is set back to the specific region otherwise you have to select it manually and 192 168 00 16. if i can't we use 24 yes you can use the address space is a smaller one and you can use slash 24 let's do it okay i'll i'll change this back to 24 and 1.024 uh, what I want to use 29 the smallest one and for this one dot eleven dot twenty nine or something we'll see what was the next IP right so let me change back to one dot zero where you need a smallest subnet for your data sub web subnet one ninety two 168 1.0 acceptable 0 to 7 is the range okay and other one is app subnet 192 168 1.8.0 1.8 slash 29 see it is accepted now the first subject is 1 to 7 and the second subnet is 3 to 15. Smallest ones. And your VNet itself a tiny one. And further, it's more more and tiny subnets. That is also possible. But what is the use case behind this? If you want to secure your devices and we want to put an isolated subnet where uh, very few devices will sit on a subnet, then we will create these kind of. So can't we change this subnet once it is deployed? Let's see. Okay. We can, we can, you told us today. Go to prod vnet1 and subnets. Select the subnet. You can alter it, but name you cannot change it. Ranges you can alter it, let's say Class C, class C, which I created, it is too small. Okay, let where it is. Come on. See the graphics. Here it is deployed, but it will not show up here. Since last four years, the same problem. I don't know what kind of development they're doing, they're doing on the portal side. So if I go to subnet, web subnet. It is really small. I want to make it as a 24. It won't work because you created a small subnet and just into that you created one more subnet. How you can expand it? I 
Understood my query? Yeah. Let's say web subnet is the one which is ranging from 1.0 to 1.7. Well, sorry, 1.7. That's that's completely one subnet. Now, after that, you created an app subnet and it is starting from 8 to 15. Now, if, if a customer is asking for expanding this, how you will expand? 8 is already utilized by someone else. You can't really expand this one. Okay, so that is the reason your network is the base where we should start designing it properly and then the rest of the things will come into picture. Once you created it, yeah. Right, right. And just a very super quick question. Uh, if they, I mean, I know I'm jumping a lot of hoops here, but uh, usually when we migrate devices, a customer going to Azure from one premise, we keep the same IPs, right? I mean, yes. So yes. do we decide the subnet on the basis of current production IPs, correct? Okay, so let's say, now it is too high level if, if someone who don't know the network part uh, but i will try to show you here so imagine customer is using in his on premise when i say in his on premise maybe in a traditional data center 10.1.0 sorry 1.0 slash 24. this is the range do we have a same range in this picture here it is yes yeah. okay right so I want to migrate one server here to here. In that case, there will be an IP conflict between both of them. Correct? So the best practice is you create a temporary staging subnet or a temporary migration staging VNet. And bring it here. Once the server is here, you shut down this, you power on this. Okay, it will temporarily run with some IP. So before you power on this, you migrate it to here. Okay. Okay. Okay, then there is no conflict. Okay, thank you. All right, so if I go back to address space, there is a small address space and it is exhausted. I want to add more. Very simple. 192, 168, 2.024. Anything, anything you can give, but I want to give sequentially another, another address space. Okay, within, within one unit, you can have two ranges. In fact, you can have two different ranges. This is also possible. It, you see, there is a warning. You, you're already using this on other location on the other VNet. Please be careful. I'm fine. Create. This is also possible. If you see, mix match. And go to subnet. Now I'll create a subnet once again. Okay, so DB subnet. 172.16.1.0.24, which is part of 172.16.1.0.24, which is part of class C dev vnet only, but it is class B IP because I've added in the address space. It's just a namesake class C, but whatever the IP range that we give in, inside, it will also support. If you see 172.16, and I have utilized that in third subnet means your VNet is a logical boundary and it's truly logical. There is there is no restrictions on the classes as well. You can always have multiple classes in one VNet. Right? So then I will go ahead and deploy a lot, deploy these many machines. Let me minimize this. Okay. So can I ask one? Sorry? Uh, there's one question. Could you please go yeah. to slash 29 subnet mm -hmm. on your Azure page? Mm -hmm. As you said that we cannot modify this one. Uh, 1 1.8 slash 29 and 1 1.0 slash 29. We can mm -hmm. modify, we cannot modify this one. You, If you want to modify, what range that you will give? Okay. 
you want to give 28 to increase beta because the further ips further ips are already used by app submit so how you can change so it first we'll go to app submit and uh, then uh, change okay so you you have a plot when you are trying to construct home you feel like it's a small you are asking your neighbor to uh, throw his house somewhere else okay <laughs> huh? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> think logical man <laughs> okay okay So, if I am representing something outside the VNet, please remember those are our public facing. So, I have five, five public facing IP addresses. Where? In this picture. Okay. So, for each and every device, there will be an associated public IP. Okay, if you are using many public IPs, you are inviting many enemies. Okay, that is a thumb rule. So every device will be associated with one of the public IP. Public IPs are not in your control. Public IPs will be allocated by your ISP. Whatever the free IP that is available at that moment, that IP will be allocated to your device. That can be either static or dynamic. When I say static, you know, self-explanatory, it the IP will remain same and it will never change even if you reboot your server. But when you take a dynamic IP, what happens whenever you reboot a server, whatever the next available IP in that in that pool, you will get allocated. So that so that you have to modify your DNS settings and this that on the public and public facing subnet side. So be careful when you are using public IPs. Use carefully. And the second one is whenever there is no requirement, don't use the public IPs. So in this picture, is there any requirement for public IPs? Obviously, yes, at the moment we have we need a public IPs, but especially for this app server, we don't need. Web servers, thumb rule says web, web servers are always in the internet facing. So they can have a public IPs, but app servers, basically we don't really require public IPs. Now we'll deploy four public IPs with these four servers. And the fifth one, we don't have any public IP. We'll try and see how we can access them, right? So what I will do, I'll go ahead and deploy four machines. Or I guess five machines we need to deploy. Under East US, what is the machine name? Let's say prod underscore VM web VM1 or prod web VM1. Okay, nah, they changed it again. Do I have my images here? How come? It's fine. I don't think so. I have those images. I've deleted them. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. So let me put it on no infrastructure redundancy is required. Where I'm deploying this machine is US. Don't concentrate on this window because VM deployment is not my aim. Network testing is my aim. Size B1S, which is the smallest one, monthly around 550 rupees. So if you want to deploy a machine, you have a couple of options. One is Azure, especially for Linux, Azure will provide SSH public key and private key. It will automatically generate and it will give you the key pair. You download the key and authenticate with the key. That is what that is what I'm trying to do here for production servers. Let's say I'll use my name and generate a key pair. What is the key pair? Prod web prod servers is the key name right inbound rule put 22 fine and networking make sure you are on a class a and we are deploying a web server it should go on to web server this is where you need to 
be careful and public IP is needed. Yes, I need a public IP along with the machine. Next, disable the boot diagnostics that we will see what it is and how we can use it later on and create a machine. Okay, so per hour, this is a cost create. So first time you don't have a key pair, right? It will ask you to download a key pair and then continue with the deployment. Let it submit and then we'll continue with the rest of the deployments. Okay, done. So let me deploy a second machine. Prod web VM2. Same thing, no infrastructure redundancy. You want to use public key? Yes, but I don't want to generate a second key. I want to use existing stored key, which is this one, right? So hardly took 30 seconds to deploy. And what is the server name? Web server, right? So place it on your web subnet. And again, I need a public IP. Deploy. Right, so the third one, I will place it in app. So prod app vm1 no redundancy ubuntu is fine this is fine key pair i'll use the same key pair prod servers irrespective whether it is a web or app next storage by default you'll get that we'll discuss later on networking class a make sure your app server should go on to app and if i go back here and look at this this doesn't have any public ip so i will remove public ip set to none disable the diagnostics and deploy it Okay, and then go back to another deployment, East US, UAT, Web, VM1. For UAT, I want to set my own username and password. Right, so I don't want to use key pair. I want to set my own username password, still it works. Next, networking, make sure you place it in UAT and web. You need a public IP? Yes, you need a public IP. Monitoring disable, deployed. Done. This is your UAT. And the last one. UK, not the region. UK. Set back to UK and development web VM1. 
no infrastructure redundancy. And if, if you look at public key and use store key, you will you will see East US key pair. Still, you can use that if you want. But the best practice is don't use the other region, other resource group key pairs. In case of that resource group is decommissioned and if you overlook that key, you will lose the key and you will not be able to log into these servers. So make sure you keep your public key or a private key authentication mechanism when you're using. You must keep your key in the same region where you are deploying so that it is easy for you to track it. Otherwise, you'll go mad. So better, I'll create one more key pair. I'll give a name, UK South Servers. Next, next, automatically pick the, pick the class C. Now you, you don't see that class A and class B because they, these are, those two are not part of the resource group. We are using a different resource group. So under that resource group, we have only one VNet that will show up and a web. I need a public IP, disable. Look at the pricing. Previously, it is 0 0.7. Now it is 0.8. And slight variation, but your virtual machine cost is region dependent. Let me download. Yes. So it's done. All right. Sini, these keepers are unique for VMs or? Uh, Sorry? This keepers you are generating, right? This mm. is unique, unique for VMs or Same uh, we can No, no, no. We can use same key pair for multiple servers. Oh. Okay. But best practice is per region, you, you try and generate a different key pair so that it is easy for you to manage the authentication. If let's say there is a password policy, every 30 days you want to change it. Okay, so okay. you'll have a multiple passwords, at least for each region, there is a different password to uh, what we call it as, uh, there is a concept called, you will do some SOC audits every three months and stuff. So in, a, in that you need to show up, yes, we have, we change these passwords every month. These are the proofs. Internally SOC audits will connect. So that time we will show those things. Let me go back to virtual machines. And if you look at why development VM has not got the public IP, did I made any mistake? Maybe app server is acceptable. Then why it is not created with the public IP? It's okay. We'll do it later on. So somewhere here, there is an option called add columns. Normally, okay, fine. Private IPs add. Right, anyway, apply. So if you look at sort by IP, prod VM1, 10.1.1.4 and 5 web vm1 and 2 4 and 5 okay and app server 2.4 and uat 16.1.4 okay and development 1.4 correct now if i take a look uh, now you got a public app you see there is there is a GUI bug, nothing else, right? So if you look at the public IPs, it's all random. So web VM one has got this one. This is web VM one public IP. And this is web 
vm2 and what was this let me check uat this is uat1 and this is for your development server so from your home there is no private connectivity between azure and your home so keep the keep that point outside and from your office there is no connectivity from office to azure so that that is also your site to site and point to site connections are out of scope what was that and how we can do it that we will discuss practically later on but as of now we don't have anything as such so the only option is you have to log in via public ips so when i say public ips routable ips over the internet you can access them so what i will do i'll i'll log in into the web server one i believe web server one will support key so web server one and web server two and app server one all the three servers are deployed with key and uat server custom password and development server again key so cd downloads if i go ls i'll have two key files these are the two key files one is prod servers key another one is uk south server Right. what i will do it is this is not a command prompt okay i've just changed it to black this is partial prompt i change the color don't confuse okay so uh, simply such sorry simply type ssh hyphen i what is the key pair this is a key pair correct or what you can say you can simply type prod username at the rate what is the public ip this is the public IP. Take this. Right. If you see now, you are inside Prod Web VM one ten dot one dot one dot four. This is one of your production web server. What about the second one? So, let me take the same command here. Only thing is, I need to change the IP address. Second one is this IP. Yes, SSH key. VM2 1.1.5. That's it. Now, if I want to log in into uh, what I'll say, app server, there's no direct way. So let's keep the app server aside for now. App server, we don't have any option to log in directly. So let's log in into this class B UAT server. I will use party. So your username and public IP port 22, it will automatically get connected and it will ask for password. Because this is manually created password. So let me change the settings a little bit. Okay, so create this as your UAT server. And one last one is pending. So, which is your development server. So if I want to log in into development server, again, I can use this PowerShell command or SSH command, right? So go to PowerShell prompt, downloads, SSH, whatever the command. I don't want to use it. I want to use partition. And 
username is this and what is the public ip public ip is this fair enough but we don't have any password it is a key how you will supply the key so if you are using putty and you want to log in using key you can't use this key directly what key let me go to downloads and this is a pem file public key pem file if you open it this is the uh, sorry private key pem file this is the open ssh uh, pem file i want to convert this file into ppk file because putty can only accept ppk okay means putty private key so what i need to do in order to convert that let me go to softwares and see if we have partition yes here i have partition let me copy this and paste it here how you will get it normally when you install putty you go to program files putty inside you will see this file i just kept one copy outside normally when you install this party you will get this file default let me open this and load your existing key load and go to downloads uk south right imported conversions export open ssh key okay login or i don't think this is the right format let me try once again UK South, save private key. Yeah, this is the one, my bad. So this is the one, private key. UK South, login. Okay. So here is the file, let's try it. Or maybe, let me delete this and try once again. Save it. I want to see that PPK format. Simply I'll give login. Yeah, I got it. So go back to your party session. And SSH, authentication, private key for authentication, browse and in downloads select this one open right so this is how we do a day-to-day -day operations when you are purely working with keys right this is one of the development vm which is sitting in UK and running with this IP address. So you can access this one or any other server, whether it is a class B or class A or class C. But now what I want to understand here is, I have this UAT VM1, that's fine. And web VM1, development VM1, that's fine. So let me close this out. And if I go to PowerShell, this is, prod vm1 and prod vm2 so now tell me what all the servers that are part of your internal network and they can exchange the data together can i ping 10.1.1.5 from 4 does it work yes yes okay so vice versa always it will work i don't want to just test it right
or not four it's working so i want to i want to ping app server some said it will work and some people said it will not work correct yes so ping 10 1 2 it will work your vnet is a logical boundary within the vnet every device can talk to every other device the problem is when you are sending data from vnet to outside then you need to think about it rest all inside the vnet you can do ping pong you can do whatever you want to do okay so the traditional imagination is if you have a subnet every subnet will have a gateway and if if we if we have a two subnets there are two gateways so by default the sub, the server which is sitting on one subnet will not be able to send the traffic to other subnet unless we allow it yes sir right that's a traditional concept keep that outside then when it comes to cloud even in aws gcp and azure anywhere the concept remains same okay so within the vnet or within the vpc or within the net you are, you are devices can communicate with each other and it is up to you if you want to put external restrictions by default they are communicating if you don't want to enable the communication then you can do some tweaking okay so normal case we we will allow the allow the access now in this case we will block the access if we really don't require it so what i will do i will simply go and use the key ssh how i will log in so this uh, app server is also using a key or what yes using a key right app server is also using some key so what i will do inside this server inside my web server i am into root prompt where is currently under root so vi login key i'll i'll go back to downloads prod server key is there no just copy the entire key private key and paste it here inside the server reason from this server you are trying to authenticate with the app server so so ls hyphen ltr your key is exposed if you are trying to log in ssh hyphen i login key what is ip 10124 it is working but you will get an error saying your password file is exposed to everybody please restrict it first so how to change mode 600 and login key only that that particular root user can log in others cannot access this file now try to log in see now it into app server what is ip address 10124 internally from app or so from web to app i jumped okay so ping it will not work right by ping it will not work because it doesn't have any public ip but check url see it is it is able to talk to internet app server if it is a web server if it is a web server like this it is acceptable if you if you ping google.com it will work because it is on the internet facing so ping is working and check url that is also working now how come this is app server is sending internet because if i do if config so 10.1 it will not show up here it will use azure provided dns on the back end so with the azure provided dns the default routing to the internet is allowed on the server if you if you don't want to allow this server to go on internet what you have to do you have to go back and go to your vnet and specific vnet there is option called dns servers 
by default in this vnet every server will use azure provided dns no sir i don't want to use azure provided dns because my organization has got its own internal dns servers in on premise similar sort of setup i want to make it inside the azure then i will deploy some dns servers and i will provide those ips let's say 10.200.200.200 or 10.100.100.100. Normally, your Google server, Google DNS will be there now. 8888. Just like 10.10.10.10. .10 Up to you. Right? So these things you can set. Then the moment you set it, it will stop communicating with internet. The DNS server will be modified and it will not it will not send any traffic to internet. Right, so now internally within the prod, within the prod, we are able to ping it. And outside, I have one development server in a different region. What is IP? 192.168.1.4. Ping 192.168.1.4. It will not work. Now, can I log in from this app server to this development server or to this? UAT server. My question is, I'm currently in this server. Can I log in from this server to this server? Or can I access that server? You can access it. You can access it, but that will be like from here. Via you'll go here and over the internet, you'll come inside like this okay how simply take this public ip and ssh see now from app server i jumped into uat web server 172.16. If I simply exit, you'll go back to app server. If I simply exit, you will go back to prod web vm1. Right? So it is it is accessible, but via internet. Internally, there is no channel to access. Means your your VNet is logical boundary. If you're trying to access something which is outside the VNet, you need to go via internet only. Right, so this is one of the business units production server, and this is also same business units production yes, sorry, UAT server, VNet, and this is more of production VNet. So why can't we have an internal communication? Because both belongs to one business unit, and both of them are on the same region. So this is where this is where your peering connections will come into picture. And also, if a developers, developers who are working on a development environment, they want to see or they want to copy some of the files from the UAT or production servers. So they also request the internal connection between this and this. When I say internal connection, even though they are physically in a different locations, Azure will provide the internal bandwidth from backbone network internally over the private network you can exchange the data with the help of peering connections okay so the peering connections concept we'll try and discuss tomorrow and we'll test it tomorrow understood clear any questions uh, sorry. Um, yeah. In these two years, uh, huh? communicating uh, between minutes, right? Like, uh, class A, prod minute one, minute two, is uh, directly accessible. Prod minute any minute. No, you're you're not audible. You're not audible. Can you come closer to the microphone? <coughs> yeah. I, I'm yeah. I'm barely can hear you. Uh, able to hear me now? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in East US region, uh, you have two vnets, right? Uh, broad vnet and uh, and um, UAT vnet, right? Mm -hmm. they, they are two vnets. You are able to communicate without NSG between vnets no. in a network security group. So network security point. groups are there. Okay, network security groups are at a single machine level, also subnet level. They are there. Oh. Okay. Okay. okay, so they are controlling your your movements at the at that particular level. But VNet is a logical boundary. If a traffic leaves VNet, then it is all public. That is what I want to tell you. Okay. That doesn't mean your NSGs are not working in the subnet level or the VM level. That they are there, but we are not discussing about them. So we'll we'll try and we'll try and dedicate one day complete session for NSG and ASG so that you'll you'll understand it clearly. Okay. Now now here there is uh, you have created this. Uh, my doubt is you are able to reach 10.1.2.4 to 172.16.1.4, right? Yeah. Uh, how how they are that? how they are coming uh, how they are yes, coming yes. that's what your question so yes, yes. from this machine it it goes to internet first and via internet how, just like how how I'm accessing from my home so from my home I'm traveling on internet and I'll reach this IP correct then yes. it will allow me inside same thing for this server also it goes on to the internet and it will travel back to this public IP and it will allow inside. Even if you try from your home, you will be able to access it. Similar condition for this web app server as well. Okay. Oh, from private, oh, from, from public okay. IP to access it. Yeah, okay. so the, it is sending data to internet and via internet it is coming. Oh. It is it is not in communicating via internally. Oh. Oh. Uh, Shrinivas, uh, can we uh, can we run a trace route and see this is actually happening? Is it possible or no? Yes. If it is working, means it is possible, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, just for you know, Alex's satisfaction, he will see it in action. You know. So trace route. So. Oh, sorry. Route print, what is the Linux command? Route, I think it's route only to check. No. I believe this one. Let's see. It's trace route complete. Uh, hmm? T R A C E. Complete trace route. Just type trace route. Yeah. Trace O U T E. Yeah. Package is not there. Let me install. Oh, so sorry. Okay. So, uh, Shini, one uh, stupid question. Okay. Um, after doing this, let's say we delete all this, we will not be charged, right? Only for Sorry. these minutes for one, one hour, right? What are you saying? If we delete all the VMs now, we will not be charged, only charged for this one hour, correct? Yes. Okay. Only for one hour, we'll get charged. Hmm. Yeah. But, Hello. Yeah, you can you explain? Uh, is there any class that explains DNS versus uh, DHCP uh, differences? Because I'm a little confused on that part. How it works? Basic functionality of it. DNS versus DHCP. And DHCP is a, your dynamic IP allocation. Okay. DNS is your name resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you are sending some data to out, normally if you are accessing Google.com. What it will do, it will use that Google DNS to resolve the particular destination. Okay. Okay. DHCP within your Wi-Fi 
Wi-Fi device that the ASCP service will run whenever the new MAC address detected, it will automatically assign one static IP, so one dynamic IP with the leasing of seven days or something by default. Okay. Right. So both the functionalities are completely different. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. You see? Uh, she knows the Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. She knows I'm audible. Yeah, audible. Yeah, tell me. Okay. My question is uh, this app uh, subnet, it's on private and mm -hmm. it is accessing via Google, uh, like DNS, which is being the Azure DNS. And, uh, no, uh, my, my you, question it, is it, it is not accessible uh, from the yeah. outside, it is not accessible. From inside, that server mm -hmm. can send the data to internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is by default. That is by default provisioning. If I don't want to allow, then don't use Azure provided DNS. So if you change the DNS, it will start. It, is, it will stop communicating. Okay. So you are saying that it is doing the outside traffic. It is it can do, but inside it is being blocked automatically. Yes. Yes. If you are coming from outside to inside, you can't. So all the kind of application because I was saying about SSH, uh, he, he is able, it is able to do the SSH. So it is being allowed, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey, so rest of the rest of the ports, so whatever the whatever the server ports that are uh, being monitored or controlled by individual applications, that we can control at NSG level. That that we will do it separately in a different session. Sure, thank you. Right? Yeah. I guess any other questions? Pratik. Uh, Uto -uto. Thanks, Vinitas. I'm saying I'm saying Pratik. Right, okay, right, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop here and uh, let's connect back tomorrow. Yeah, let's connect back tomorrow. What I will do, I'll delete, see whether it will take five minutes more to do the lab. It's fine, but completely delete it. Can't we keep this configuration for some time? Maybe for tomorrow. Why? Uh, the reason is we have to create it once again tomorrow. Like we stop no. the servers. No. Okay. Even if you stop then a server, we will have to pay. We will have to pay. Even, <laughs> even uh, yeah. Then if you are ready to pay twenty five thousand, yes, I'll keep it for a whole month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Uh, that, that is the most scary part of learning cloud money part. <laughs> right. Everything is very flexible. Pricing also very flexible. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. Let me stop Thank here. You. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.